retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, de debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Now watch this. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. 1 Peter 2.11 I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. There are passions of the flesh that wage war. That means there are, there are passions that would seek to wage war and destroy your soul. They do battle against your soul. Something that wars against your soul means to destroy your soul. These are soul-destroying passions. And if they get you, you die. You die in your sin. You go to hell. That's just as real as that scripture. And you might have thought that you sold your soul to Satan. But Christ died on the cross for you too. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. It is a lie straight out of hell that Satan can take a soul that God cannot touch. That's a lie from hell. The Lord Jesus Christ's blood cleanses all sin, including that sin. He can save any man, anywhere. God Almighty, through the Lord Jesus Christ, is the Savior of mankind. How many of you sold your soul to the devil before you got saved? When you shot your arm up full of heroin, and sucked cocaine up through your nostrils, and smoked your dope, and drank your wine and your liquor and your beer, and bed hopped from one hell hole to the next, and blasphemed his name day in and day out. And the only thing that you lived for was your next high, and the next sin that you could commit and whatever pleasure you might gain from it and found yourself sinking deeper and deeper and deeper into a pit that you didn't know how to bottom and one day you awakened and said to yourself I'm an absolute total waste my life is wasted there's no hope for me and I'm eternally doomed for hell and then the light came into your heart and the Word of God began to work upon your soul and the convicting power of the Holy Spirit began to speak to you and God said to you deep down inside your heart where you live and who you are, I love you. I love you. And I want to save you. And in your darkness and in your lost condition and in your dope addiction and in your filth, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I love you. And I died for you. And I want to save you. And you felt a hand reach down and take hold of you. And in your heart, uh, in some small way, you were able to reach up and take hold of that hand. And the very moment that you took hold of his hand in faith, he lifted you up out of that pit of hell. And he saved your soul. And he set your feet on a solid rock. And he wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life. And you became a child of God by the new birth. And Satan didn't like it a bit. But there wasn't a thing he could do about it. Amen. They make everything under the sun except thinking about their eternal soul. So what would it profit you, my dear friend? You've got it all. You gained the world. But the Lord said, what would it profit you to gain this world and lose your soul? Salvation of your soul is the most important thing in your life. To know, to know the Lord Jesus Christ rightly, there's nothing greater than that. That's the only thing that can make you free. He can break the bonds of sin, tie down the chains, and give you life. But the Lord Jesus is the only one that can do that. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. At the name of Jesus, demons run. At the name of Jesus, angels stand at attention. The spirit world knows its place. But a man is like a cow. He wanders around and chooses good. 
like a dumb animal. God Almighty, don't let anybody in the sound of my voice end up in hell. That we're not here tonight to try to give you a bunch of, a bunch of, a bunch of moral platitudes to, to kind of teach you how to live and how to think about yourself. You get plenty of that on TV. We're not here tonight to give you some kind of a trumped up prosperity gospel where it teaches you how to feed that greed, I mean time and time again. All you got to do is tune in TV and you'll get all kinds of prosperity pimps dishing it out to you day in and day out. Not what we're here for. We're here tonight to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and the whole counsel of God. And that is the word of the living God. If I'm going to be a Bible preacher, I'm going to preach that. And that's what's important to me. It's for you to understand that my calling is to preach this book. That's what I live for. Whether men like it or whether men don't like it is irrelevant. That has nothing to do with it. Whether it's accepted or not accepted is meaningless. Whether I can be approved by this group, accepted by that group, forget it. That doesn't mean a thing to me. I've lived too long now. I don't have that much time left before I stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. I'm not starting in the ministry. I'm not trying to join somebody's group or clique. I've been at this too long to, to, to deviate and to waver from the truth of God's Word. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning at verse 9. I want you to read with me these words of the Apostle Paul. Or if you don't have your Bible, listen carefully. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do you not know that? Now Paul's talking to the Corinthians. The Corinthians were very much like the New Yorkers of their, of their time. In Corinth, they had a temple on the pinnacle of the hill with a thousand prostitutes. And fornication became an act of worship. And Paul was dealing with this. Paul was dealing with people coming into the true gospel of Jesus Christ who are trying to kind of squeeze in some of their former practices, believing that, well, this, it's, it's at least a little better than it used to be. I used to fornicate with all kinds of people, now it's only one person. Isn't, isn't would God accept that? I mean, obviously, we love each other. Isn't this okay? But Paul's telling them, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Now, he's talking to people who are continuing in these practices. I'm not talking about people who once struggled with it or have turned from it or still have to fight the tendencies. But he, he goes on, he says, neither fornicators, people who engage in sexual activity outside of the bond of marriage between one man and one woman, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived, folks. Do not be deceived. Do not let some hyper grace preacher lead you into these practices and tell you this is okay. It's not okay. Do not be deceived. We're not saved to do these things. Paul goes on and says in verse 11, and such were some of you, but you are washed. But you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. Sanctified means you were set apart 
to glorify God and you were given the power to maintain that separation from your old lifestyle. Don't be deceived, Paul says. You can't go back there. You can't do the things you left behind. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And those that were baptized with him into his death are raised up with him into newness of life. You come back into that rightful place of God where you are a living testimony of the power of God to keep us free from sin. And that which destroys the soul. We're a testimony of God. He said, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. Notice this afar off. Not only can you have you forgotten where you came from, but he said you can't see where you're going. Now a lot of folks are so tied up with their life. They're so concerned about daily affairs and this and that, all the mechanics, the nuts and bolts, and everything that they're doing, the shopping trips, and the vacations, and all this stuff. And that's all they think about.